their own creed, and so on. So sharia doesn't necessarily refer to a legal system, it refers to just following your beliefs, essentially. What you believe is right, what you believe is wrong. Now I'm going to answer, I'm going to talk about a few controversial topics. One, the most basic unit of society that Islam considers. Islam doesn't consider the basic unit of society to be an individual. Islam considers the basic unit of society to be the family. Because if you think about it rationally, what is a family? It is a, it is a reproductive unit. It has a supportive environment to nurture the next generation, provide a secure environment to help support the next generation of human beings coming into existence. This is what the family is. It's not, we're not a bunch of individuals. We were born as islands unto, us, unto ourselves. We were born dependent on other people. We are affected by other people, and we will affect other people. And this refutes the, the very basis of liberalism, which believes that we're all just individuals, which, which essentially we, uh, it only considers that the individual is just important. And as an individual, your primary concern is your own satisfaction of, of yourself and what you want irrespective of um, responsibility and duties. And this is, this is, I know in practice there is duties, they have to, it is a natural necessity of every physical system to conclude there must be duties. But, but Sharia is one of the only ones that says that, well, let's, be, let's come out of it, let's be honest about it, it's duty first. So, family. Communism believes the basic unit of society is, uh, is the society itself. We're all just spokes in the wheel. We have no choice about things. Our individuality is suppressed. So we have to now just do what's great for the greater good and uh, ignore our own, in, uh, our own needs and issues, which of course, as you know, has caused has caused many problems. As for individualism, well, you know uh, what that's caused in a society. People no longer uh, care about one another, unfortunately. People are concerned with their own uh, self-fulfillment. And they believe that whatever they, uh, their impulses want is, must be satisfied. Whatever their impulses want must be satisfied. Whatever, whatever it is, within obviously certain legal limits, of course. Unfortunately, when you tell a person that the purpose of your life is to satisfy your, your own impulses as your primary objective, then when that person's impulse is motivated to do something criminal, for example, let's say guys in the club see an attractive woman, and the woman's not interested, for example, and he might want to then start harassing her. For him, this is just being consistent with his first impulses. The law says, of course, well, you should do this. is wrong. Fine, fine. But this is him acting on his own impulses. And you made this his first basis. So everyone now makes a calculation as to, can I get away with this crime without the police finding me out? And the, and the only way to control crime is we need more police. We need more deterrent. Why do we need more deterrent police? Is it not sufficient? The, the moral values to deter people from doing this? Should they realize this? No, because they realize that if people can get away with it, they will do it. And a lot of the times, there was an interesting study in, in um, a Central London uh, University uh, among students, and they asked uh, essentially, uh, well, presumably male students, uh, if you uh, could obviously uh, rape uh, someone and get away with it, would you do it? And shockingly, absolutely, it's absolutely true. Uh, is that 40 to 30 percent reported yes they would. Others were not undecided and so on. And I think maybe 30 percent said no, never. And this is the absolutely shocking, absolutely shocking. And in this society, when you're only encouraged to look at your own self first, they report that since 90, since the, the, the late 1980s, there's a 30 percent rise of narcissism in this society, of clinical narcissism. And I don't know if anyone knows about narcissism. Narcissism is the, the overinflated ego, the person who thinks they are the, 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 the most special person in the world, that everyone, that they deserve to, to, to do things for them, and they are the only concern of themselves. And this is a, a, a very big problem in society, whereas in Islam, we consider that uh, you live amongst your fellow human beings, they have a right upon you as you have a right upon them, and all must be fulfilled. And, and you will be judged based on fulfilling the rights of others. Now, in terms of the family, uh, the family, uh, in terms of the relationship in the family, how, how Islam organizes this? Islam believes that men and women are equal. And there's a verse of the Quran, Surah 3, verse 195, which says, uh, that the, the, uh, Allah says, uh, says, I do not waste the deed of any do among you, any male or female. The one of you is as the other. 
So the one of you is as of a male or female. Any good deed done by a male or female is equal. It's as it's all the same. It's all the same. Not better or worse depending on man or woman. So if someone doesn't uh, uh, doesn't care about men, women, are they better than all the, than each other intrinsically? No. If some says equal, others says equal. We're, we're all human beings. We're all fallible. We're all here to do to, to fill our purpose. However, we are different. You know, let's be open and honest. But we are different. Not intellectually, yes, we're the same. Uh, yes, we uh, we go from two eyes, ears, and somewhere same same species, of course. But the woman has reproductive uh, reproductive organs, which uh, give birth to children, next generation. A man has equal uh, has a you know a, a enhanced upper body strength and more testosterone, is product of testosterone. Let's be open about this. There's nothing wrong with this. It's just how you know if you believe in evolution, how evolution made us. Or if you believe in God, it's how God made us. Whatever. But we are we have functional specialization, so to speak. And so this is all. So when the Quran um, uses the word, it says in uh, Surah 2, verses uh, 228, and women shall have rights similar to the rights uh, against them, according to what is equitable. But men have a degree of responsibility over them, and Allah is exalted in power and wise. People say, "Oh, this is discriminating against women. How dare!" Uh, men have a degree of responsibility over women. How dare they? I'll say, okay, look, let's look at this rationally. This rational. Okay, men and women have equal intelligence. Fine. Men and women obviously are both human. Fine. But with all these e equal attributes, men have increased uh, um, strength, uh, physical strength. So they have both same intelligence. Man has, generally speaking, increased physical strength. And a woman has the ability to. Uh, uh, gestate and produce children. These are the, the, the two fundamental differences. So, what Islam does functionally, rationally, is okay, the man is responsible for protecting and maintaining the woman because he is stronger out of the two. So, he should protect the, the, uh, the one that's weaker than him. And the woman's responsibility, or uh, her specialist, uh, specialization, is that she's good for uh, nurturing children because she has obviously the you know, physical uh, organs to. Uh, uh, you know, nurture children, give them uh, nutritional milk which they require to develop themselves. And of course, all the biologists, and you can study this yourselves, women have keener hearing, they have to, they have to hear um, the baby better, they have, uh, they're, they're more empathic, and so on and so forth. This is all common sense now. This is not discrimination, not sexism, this is just human nature. Anyone that has a problem with this doesn't have a problem with Islam or Sharia, has a problem with human nature. I'm not saying that the woman should only look after the children, and the man uh, is, is only concerned with working outside, bringing home the, the, the butter or whatever, not the bacon, of course. So, you know, I'm not saying that a woman can work, and a man uh, can look after children. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked after his children and did housework. The Prophet Muhammad, who is our exemplary example, did the housework as well, helped his wife do the housework. What I'm saying is that there's a specialization, and Islam tries to manage the specialization in the most rational way. But unfortunately, with uh, this kind of liberalism, uh, where it's very strict on the of equality, it doesn't, doesn't understand the difference between um, uh, difference. <laughs> doesn't difference between differences between men and women, unfortunately, because it's so scared that this discrimination is going to happen. And I say, look, you might have a bad history between how men treat women in your history, but in our history, uh, historically speaking, you know, the, the women were given rights one thousand one years ago. The right to uh, own property in England it was only given last century. You know, the right to vote was given one thousand one years ago in England only last century. So we did not follow the same history as as, as uh, you know the people that went through this. So don't project onto us that we are we that just because we just assign specialist differences to, uh, to, to different roles. Uh, that this is now uh, discrimination. And as I said, a woman can't work, and so on. But also, I want to make another point. This is the very interesting thing of this. People say that if a woman's not working, then, is, then she's not fulfilling uh, herself, uh, this is uh, unfair, and so on. I said, who said that a woman, being a housewife, is inferior to a man bringing uh, at home money as support the family? Who said that? Why is it inferior? Are you telling me? That the woman who supports and brings forth the, the future of the human race as an inferior task to the man that's just designed to just support the family and keep it going so that the next generation is, is, is brought forth and nurtured to 
maturity. Are you saying that's, that's inferior? Who said this? It seems to me that the man was made as the, as the model of what it means to be successful, again, liberal, liberalist, capitalist society, material, that unless you're doing something that's materially beneficial, you have no worth. Unless you are economically productive, you have no worth. And Islam said no. In fact, there is, the Prophet Muhammad Salaam, said that uh, paradise, the path of paradise, so to speak, is under the feet of the woman, or the mother, in, in terms of the respect. And one man went up to the Prophet Muhammad Salaam, and said, you know, who should I respect more out of my parents? And the Prophet Muhammad said, your mother. And then he said, then who? Said, your mother. And then who? Your mother. And then who? Then your father. Do we hear the Islamophobes talking about this, mentioning this verse, or this uh, narration from Muhammad? No. But you see, we don't, we, uh, we, they don't understand that Islam is not discriminating, it is just trying to make the most efficient reproductive unit possible, with, uh, uh, according to human nature, that's all. So, man, a man in a relation, in, in a family should, yes, he's given responsibility responsibility of the woman. This means that he does head the family. That's true. That is true. However, he has obligations he must fulfill. He has to make sure she's fed, clothed, and sheltered appropriately like himself. Or, in some, in some uh, descriptions, like she was used to back in the family home. If it's whichever is better. Secondly, if he's poor and she's rich, he still has to pay for her as supporter, and she doesn't have to pay a single dime on him. She can keep all her money. She, can still, she, is, she is allowed to work uh, and, and go out to work. No, there's no restriction on women working. Prophet Muhammad's so first wife was a, mer a merchant, a businesswoman. And if uh, they get divorced, if the man and woman get divorced, the woman is entitled to alimony. Is entitled to alimony. And also, considering, and I want to bring up a controversial issue, polygamy, very controversial issue. Although, why is it controversial in this country? I don't understand. Because it's like, hmm, you know, having multiple wi multiple wi uh, mistresses, oh, that's fine. That's just enjoying life. But multiple wives, oh, that's just no. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but uh, if you get married, you have obligations to that, to, to that person. If you have a mistress, you have no obligations to that person. Which is better? Which is worse? You, you decide. And the reason why it me, uh, and it was, it was allowed to look at it is simple, very simple. If the husband, if the wife doesn't satisfy the husband in all his uh, emotional or um, sexual needs, the Islam is trying to encourage the man not to throw away the woman like she's worthless because she doesn't fulfill the, what you want. But if possible, then you try and get another wife, and then and uh, you have to still treat them equally, though. Where, where you, what you spend on the wife, on the other, you have to spend equal time with them. You have to treat them equally. But do not throw away the first wife if she can't, you know, uh, she, she can't provide for you in all the needs you want. Don't do that. You know, she's she's worth something. She's very, you know, she's precious. She's, you know, she's the, the fountain of life for the, for, the, for the, you know, for humanity. But if a man can't satisfy his wife's emotional and sexual desires, then she should she can divorce him. Like, well, this guy is not good enough. He's not satisfied. He's he might be oppressive. He might be tyrannical. Or whatever. He's not good enough to be. Um, you know, uh, a husband to a woman, I'm sorry, he's gone, he's out of here. But a man is encouraged not to throw away his wife because women are important. Women are the most important uh, aspect of, of the family because they are the heart of it. And again, it's almost like uh, if they're the heart, then the man is just the, uh, like the, the bodyguard, the security guard standing outside. <laughs> See, this is, the, this is how it looks at it. But you don't hear this, this narrative, you don't hear this story. And so on. And uh, inshallah, we'll, we'll go through a bit more about this in, in a bit. Community relations. How is one defined community relations? Sm <laughs> smiling and giving salam, as they like saying peace, be a, be a unto you, to anyone you meet. Yeah? Trying to, even strangers, just smiling at strangers, is a charity. And this is what it, it, some encourages. If you go down the uh, park, said, Many of you might not be uh, gone to London, though, but especially in London, uh, you know, everyone's all grim faced and so on. Maybe Bristol's different, but uh, maybe I've been brought up in London too long. But uh, you know, you see everyone's all grim faced and so on. No one smiles at each other. If you do, they just think you're a pervert, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. So, like, oh, what the hell? It's smiling. 
So, uh, but Islam says, smile at strangers. Because when someone smiles at you, you